Okay, in this quick video, I'm going to show you how to make multi-panel plots using Python using a slick little template. So let's assume that you have data and you want to be able to plot it and it makes sense to compare different aspects of your data. So for example, maybe you've got data that looks like this from one set and then when you change something slightly, maybe it looks like that. When you change something else slightly, maybe it looks like that. But then for all three of those, you have an additional variable and maybe it looks like that, like that, like that. And all of a sudden putting all these on a single plot gets really messy. And so what you'd really like to do is have a multi-panel plot where you can compare these things sort of separately. So this is what I'm talking about when I say a multi-panel plot. A multi-panel plot, like the name suggests, instead of just being one grid area with one plot, you're gonna have several subplots. So let's imagine for a minute that you could break it up into thirds. Well, now you could have the three different initial variables that you could be comparing against one another, and each one of these could have its comparison for the other variable that you explored, right? Because these all share a common x-axis, like time or temperature or whatever, then you could have one common set of tick marks for describing it, right? And then you could have one common y-axis and y-label, perhaps, for these as well, okay? So how do you go about doing this? In Excel, you can't, uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, now, you could use something like Qt Grace or um, Origin, um, but today what I'm going to show you how to do is how to do this in uh, Python, and I've got a little script that makes it easy. Okay, So if you haven't used Python for plotting, uh, I suggest you check it out. It's really, really nice. It's really easy. Um, there's a little bit of coding, but the best part is once you do it once, then it's basically done. You don't have to worry about it again. You can use your script and just make slight changes. So today the data I'm working with comes from uh, Zoe, a gal in my class, who collected some UV vis data for a bunch of different samples, right? So she's got the 90 kilo ohm samples. Over here she's got the 60 kilo ohm samples and then the 30 kilo ohm samples. So there's six sets of data, right? So the 90, that's X and Y, and then you've got 90, X and Y, but this time she's calling it clear. They've changed some variable about it, right? And then the same with 60 and the same with 30. This is all in a CSV, commerce separated value, uh, file. That's going to be the easiest. And it's got this top row, this first row, uh, is the name of the column. So we're going to use that just as it is. When we come over here to Spider, the client that I like to do uh, Python programming in, we see the following. Uh, first off, the first, what, from lines, rows, it lines in the code 8 to 13, I'm just bringing in functions and libraries, right? I'm bringing in pandas, that's going to help us bring in the data from Excel. I'm bringing in matplotlib, pyplot, because that is a, the plotting tool for Python. Um, I'm bringing in grid spec, and that's going to let us split it up into grids, right? These subplots. We're going to br break that up by introducing grids. Um, I'm bringing in numpy. I don't actually know if we're using numpy on this. Um, and matplotlib and then some parameters for the font type. Okay, So the first thing that we do in this, if you can see this, is we need to bring in, uh, well we need to tell it the file name. So this is called zoe.csv, right? That's the name of our CSV file. Um, so we're going to do data frame is equal to pandas.read underscore CSV, that file name. So that that's now brought the file in. So when we run this, uh, if we went over to our variable explorer after running this, let's go ahead and run it you'll see that there will be data frame which will be our once it runs which will contain all that information in the Excel spreadsheet once it brings it in once it's gonna have it there okay there it is here's our data frame all the information that was in that Excel comma separated value data file it's now in this data frame okay now we're gonna pull the individual data from that data frame into a list where we can actually plot it from right so we need X and Y values for all these so you've got X90 Y90 we're going to read that by just going to the data frame and pulling the column that's labeled x90 kilo ohm, right? That's the, the first uh, data set. We'll do the same thing with the 90 kilo ohm, but this time clear, so they changed some other variable. We're going to bring that in. We'll do the same thing for the 60 kilo ohm for both of its data sets, for the 30 kilo ohm for both of its data sets. I'm naming these different names over here where I'm having them equal the values so that I can uh, pull them up separately later on, okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the limits of the plot for the data sets. We could set each subplot to have different uh, limits. For example, um, these subplots, I said that they might make sense for them to all have a common axis, and in this plot it is. It does make sense for them to have the same common axis. So I'm going to set them to have the same minimum and maximum. 
for both the x and the y axes. But if you wanted them to be separate, you totally could. You could pick a different name. Instead of having x min and x max, for example, you could name them something else like x min for plot 1, x min 1, right? Or x max 1. You could name them anything you want. We're going to leave just one set. Um, generate some nice colors. You can use the default colors in Python, or you can use your own. Here I've got a bunch of colors that I like. Um, okay, now we get into it. How do you make the, actually the multi-panel plot? Here's how you do it. We're going to do figure equals plt, so this is pyplot, um, dot figure. So we're creating a figure first, and so we're going to give it a size. Let's do a 5 inch by 5 inch figure, because square figures look nice in publications. So it's a nice 5 inch by 5 inch canvas that we've just created. Next we're going to do grid spec. GS is grid spec dot grid spec, and we're going to do a 6 by 3. What on earth does that mean? Well, if we go over here, what that means, it's rows and columns. So 6, 3, that means that there are going to be 6, right? We can count these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 rows that we're going to divide the figure canvas up into, and there's going to be three columns that we're going to divide into. We actually don't need the three. That's just what was in my code. You could just do one if you want. We're just going to leave it though. It doesn't matter. Because what we really want is to be able to do is split it on the rows. We're not actually going to split the columns. Okay? So six and three. Why did we choose six instead of some other number? Six is nice because we can go from zero to two, from two to four, and from four to six really easily in this format. Right? And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. Um, last thing here is grid space gives you an update uh, function to add spacings between the figures. So, for example, when we finally make this thing and plot it, multi panel error, it's going to look like this. You'll notice that there are some slight separations between these things. Well, we can tune that. We can tune how big of a gap we want in terms of vertical or horizontal distances between subplots, and that's what that command is doing for us. Okay, so. Now that we've created a canvas and we've put a grid on it, now we can go ahead and start filling that canvas with plots, or in our case, subplots, you know, smaller sections of plots. So we're going to generate the first panel first. Okay, we're going to call it extr underscore subplot equals fig dot add underscore subplot. So in the fig, in the figure, we're going to create add subplot. And we're going to use grid spec to say we're going to place this from 0 to 2 in terms of uh, rows and covering all three of our columns. So that should be just this first area that we're generating. So we can plot our data, and if you haven't plotted data before, it's pretty simple. You basically give it an x value, a y, and then all these values at the end over here, they're just things like the colors you want to use, the marker type you want to use, the line you want to use, um, all of that which I'm not going to cover in this video, um, but you can take a look at the example code. Um, and then you've got a bunch of these from 54 all the way down to 64 is really just me setting the limits, right? It sets the limit of the plot. It tells me, it, it allows me to say where do I want the tick marks? Do I want them on the inside of the figure versus the out? For example, tick parameters, I want them on the in side. And right now it's saying place them on the right hand side and the top side. Over here, we're saying turn them label on the bottom off, label on the top off, label on the right off, but a label on the left true. Or in other words, you'll notice that there's no labels on any sides of this, on the top, right, and left, bottom, right? But on the left, the labels of our ticks are showing up, right? 60 up to 120. So you could choose those to be whatever you want. If you wanted them all on, you could. In this case, since they're all going to share the same x-axis, I'm going to only have them turned on on the bottom plot, because that way it's less cluttered. Okay? But I am going to leave them on on the top so that it's easier to read the values off from that y-axis, okay? Um, you can place tick marks. Uh, PyPlot will do a pretty good job of placing tick marks on its own. However, if you want to place them in a specific way, like you want them to be every 20 units or 10 units or whatever you want, you can make it do so. So here's how I do it. X ticks equals numpy, so we do use numpy, dot a range, and I'm for my x-axis, I'm gonna have it go from zero, starting at zero, it's going to go from all the way up to x max plus 1, and it's going to do it by dividing x max by 4. So it's going to take the total number there, and it's going to divide it by 4. So it's going to be 4 increments it's going to use for that. On the y-axis, it's going to start at y minimum, and it's going to go up to y max plus 1. You have to do the plus 1, otherwise it'll leave it off. So you go 1 higher than where you want it to go. And we're going to do y max divided by 4. So that's going to divide it into 4 regions as well. 
we're turning minor ticks on in these additional lines of code down here you can set the length of these lines of the tick marks if you only want tick marks on one side versus another you can turn them on or off for different sides up to the true or false for the bottom and top and different things like that mean um, then you turn on these tick marks with these parameters you can tell it to plot a legend and then plot it from whatever length scale you want um, now so that's going to generate this first figure we can generate the second one very similar it's going to be you could grab this exact same line of code and copy it and paste it down here the only difference is that right here in the grid spec instead of going from 0 to 2 right instead of plotting this from 0 to 2 in terms of rows we're going to plot from 2 to 4 okay so you plot 2 to 4 you change your data up here we were plotting the variable x90 and x90 clear here we're plotting x60 you know and x60 clear so a different set of data we're plotting there in that middle section otherwise it's all the exact same um, one difference I guess you could say is that on the left on the label you see that the label is now labeled true on the left because we wanted this transparency label on the left hand side right there in the third section we do the exact same but now we plot from four to six in all these cases we're still plotting from zero to three in terms of columns um, what would happen if we change that what if we only plotted from zero to two in terms of the column and you can see when we go from zero to two we're only plotting the first two columns and we're not using that third column so if you wanted to you could make these plots as complicated as you wanted you could add um, nine plots right you could do whatever you want um, by by breaking it up into different grids however you liked so in this case we don't want that we're gonna move it back to three because that makes more sense for what we're working on then you'd go through and this time we're gonna plot the x equals 30 as opposed to the 90 or the 60 that was I think the resistance that they used in this experiment um, and you can set which labels you want on and off this time you'll notice that the bottom is also labeled true we do want labels along the bottom okay now you'll notice that there is no label on the bottom yet like there's there's labels on the units right it says 400 600 800 but it doesn't give us an an X label so we can add that we're gonna go ahead and grab this down here and we're gonna plot an X label and we have to give it a name so let's call it wavelength and I assume that those are in nanometers so we'll say that it is wavelength in nanometers and there you go now we've got an x-axis that says wavelength in nanometers okay there you have it so now we have a really nice multi-panel plot that was relatively painless because once like I said once you create this code you can really easily just introduce new data name your variables and make very slight changes to the code without messing with most of it and generate a really nice high quality plot like this in very little time so I'm gonna make this code available um, in the comments of this video you can email me and I'll send you a copy of it and probably put it on my github as well um, now let's say that you want to do something else let's say instead of like this which is really nice for comparing 90 versus 90 clear 60 versus 60 clear what if we wanted to plot all these red plots on the same line and all the dotted blue lines on another line or in other words what if we wanted our figure to look like this maybe we wanted maybe we want a plot that does all three of those together and over here we're going to have another half of our plot that does these ones together to compare so we want a two panel plot instead of a three panel plot and we want them to be sort of vertically oriented instead of horizontally how would we modify our code to make that happen okay easy enough let's grab all of this we're gonna copy that we'll come over here and we're gonna make a new file that I'm just calling example for a moment we're gonna read in the data the exact same right we're gonna still be using the same data that we plot um, what's different is that instead of a grid spec going from 6 to 3 right where we divide it up like this how would we be doing it differently well let's think about it this time the way that we want to plot it is like this we want two columns and two rows so when we do this we could do one could probably just do like that one two one two you know go from 0 to 1 and 1 to 2 or you could go from 0 to 2 2 to 4 0 to 2 2 to 4 I know that'll work um, so let's just do that we can go 0 to 4 on both of those so instead of a 6 3 panel let's do a 4 comma 4 panel okay now we don't we're not gonna need three panels right now this has three panels so let's get rid of the third one for a minute we'll mess with the labels and stuff later first let's get it to create it in the right spots okay 
instead of plotting from 0 to 2 and 0 to 3, let's go ahead and plot this. We want it to be the entire column. So we're going to go from 0 to 4, right? The first, oh sorry, the first is rows. So we're going to go from 0 to 4. And then we're going to go, let's see, what are we trying to create? We're going, the row is from 0 to 2, and the column is, two, is 0 to 4. Okay, so we're going to go 0 to 4, and then, then 0 to 2. Then we're going to go 0 to 4, and then 2 to 4. There we go. So now we've got, um, now we've got the, the panel that we were looking for. We have to fill it with the right data still, but that's going to be easy to do. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll, we'll fix the labels. It's, it's writing over itself and stuff. We can fix that pretty easily. So let's go ahead and grab those. We're going to put our x-axis and stuff up on here. Okay. We're going to turn off the labels for the y-axis on the second plot. Right. So over here, label bottom false label top false right label left is set to true right now let's label that to false right so that's going to turn those off over there okay um, I'm going to grab this first set of data and plot it over here okay we're going to plot not only x 90 and 60 but x and y 90 60 and 30 so I'll change the label 90 60 and 30 we can change the colors we'll do that in a moment um, and then we'll move the clear data, we'll put it on this other plot over here. So we'll put the 90, the 60, we need to change this one to 30. So let's change the labels on those, 90, 60, 30. Okay, so those are okay. Um, let's make sure that our labels are turned on correctly over here. Here we want the bottom label off for now, the top label off, right off. There we go. So that should be okay. Let's try that. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now you can compare the effect of the 30, 60, 90 variable, I think which is the resistance in this experiment, really well for both of these. Um, there's some things that are not perfect. For example, if you look at this bottom, the wavelength is only showing up under the one, and it's not under both, and the numbers are turned off there. So we need to turn on the numbers for probably both of them, actually. So this gives you a feel for how to go ahead and start making multi-panel figures uh, in Python.